that I will speak on. A father must have what I call the wisdom, you know, to know how not to be moved when he's not loved the way the mother is loved. That's what makes a father a father. They pay the price, but the credit goes to the mothers. Hello? So today, I told them in the first service, everyone that's a father figure over your life, do something to appreciate them today. Are you hearing me? Send a text message to them. Tell them how they've been a father to you. And don't only end it with text message. Send a gift. It could be a recharge card. It could be that you credit the account. It could just do something, no matter how small, to show anyone that I've been a father to you in any way that you appreciate them. I told them in the first service, I don't want to preach the first service message, there's no time. In the first service, we, we held on John, John chapter 6, verse 11, that whatsoever you thank God for receives grace for greater performance. Anything you thank God for multiplies. If you thank God for your father, your father will increase in performance. He will know that, yes, ah, I'm really appreciated. And when I say father, it does not mean that they gave back to you. I told you. It could be your husband that is playing the role of a father over your life. It's not just twisting you as a wife that he will just have sex with or come to eat in their restaurant, you know, and just say, okay, he's my dry cleaner. No. He looks at you and says, you need to go more to school. You need to in increase in what you know. You need to go and learn this little trade. Oh, please take this little change. Add to your business. You know, that's who a father is. He's not just a husband to you. He's encouraging you, helping you to become a better person. Make sure that today, today, do it today. It's once a year. Before we get to another Father's Day, it is June next year. That's 2023. So you have the chance today to make every father's heart to be gladdened, you know, so that they can perform better. I wrote a poem. I read it in the first service. I don't know whether I should read it again. I don't know whether I have the time. I wrote this poem for fathers. I read it for everyone to hear. And I said, the thug father is not a title, but an assignment. Not a position you get into because you have biological children, but because of the role you play. The role you play in the lives of people. This is why at times you see uh, an adult holding on to some young people or young person saying to people, this is my father. No wonder God is referred to as our heavenly father, not our heavenly mother. Imagine why God decides, why God decides to call himself the father of the fatherless, not the mother of the motherless. It shows us how high God upholds the position, assignment of a father. Therefore, therefore, this is a command. If you still have a father over your head, I want you to jump up on your feet and say, Oh God, I thank you for my father. Can you do that? Is that how to jump up on your feet and say it? Clap for the Lord and be seated. Now, this morning, stroke afternoon, I have my assignment is still 12.30, so I have 45 minutes to talk with you, share with you the word of God. We asked a question and we started answering. What does it take to become a father? What does it take to become a father? A father is not just something you, you get. You know, it's not like a political office. We saw that what happened in our, in our politics, that Delegates were enriched for candidates to emerge. It doesn't happen like that when it talks about when we talk about having a father. What does it take to become a father? In the first service, I spoke on this point. I won't go back to it. I would like you to go, go online to listen to it. I said, the determination to live an exemplary life is what makes you a father. As number one, Isaiah 52, verse 2, I said, we saw it in scriptures. God said to Israel, Look to Abraham, your father. Look to Abraham, your father. That anyone that does not live as an example, irrespective of the number of children he or she has, is not a father. Now, what makes you a father is the determination to live an exemplary life. I don't need to go back to it. Let's now go to point number two straight. We have a lot of things to learn today. 
What makes you a father? Why am I teaching you? And we have women here. We have ladies here. So that you ladies can know what to look out for. When it is time for you to choose somebody that will become your husband, somebody that will become the father of your children. If you don't look well, you might choose wrongly. It is not everything that glitters like gold that is gold. You need to look so well, so well, so well, so that you will not make the wrong choice. So many people have made the wrong choice and they are regretting today. Now that's why I'm teaching this in your presence. And to every woman that is here, what you hear today, encourage your husband to live up to. Am I communicating? Let's look at number two. What does it take to become a father? Number two, the need for a vision-driven, in brackets, purpose-driven lifestyle in order to build a home and a future for your children. What does it take to become a father? The need for a vision-driven, in bracket, purpose-driven lifestyle in order to build a home and a future for your children. I saw these two scriptures and I want us to put them on screen. Proverbs 13, 22 and Proverbs 19, 14. Proverbs 13, 22. While they are bringing it on screen, I will go on. Vision is what makes fathers who they are. Vision is what makes fathers who they are. Now, this is my definition for vision today. Vision is the picture of the future you are so possessed with to the point that it drives you into corresponding actions. I come again. Vision is the picture of the future you are so possessed with to the point that it drives you into corresponding action. Now, why is it that it is purpose or vision-driven life that makes fathers who they are? Now, look at what the Bible says we are to do. Proverbs, where is that scripture? 13.22. Let's read together on your seat. One, two, and three. Let's go. A good man. Leave it an inheritance. I didn't hear you. Let's come again. Let's come again. I need to hear your voice. One, two, three, and let's go. A good man. Leave it an inheritance to his children's children. And the wealth of the sinners is laid up for the just. Wait for me. Now look at this. A good man. Now who is a good man? It is the father that is being referred to here. Now, the duty of the father is not just to say, well, I'm going to grow up one day and begin to eat the fruit of my labor over my children. A good man, a father is any man that can live a vision-driven life. And what is the vision? We should always look towards this scripture that we, when it is time for us to leave the earth, our children's children should have inheritance from us. Not even our children alone. Our children's children should have inheritance. Now, they should have something that they could say, yes, we are taking, our daddy has left this thing down for us. Our children's children. If our children's children have inheritance, do you think our children will not have? Answer me. They will. So it takes a, a purpose-driven, vision-driven life to become a father. A vision that has taken hold of you, sorry, that have not taken hold of you, is not yet a vision. I will explain. Now, how do you know this kind of fathers? Number one, under two, one, one, two, or let's put two A, they will be so willing to organize their lives before they bring a woman into it. They are so willing. We are looking at the kind of fathers that we are talking about. They will be so willing to organize their lives. To A. So willing to organize their They don't just say, now oh, it is time for me to have a girlfriend. Let me have a girlfriend. A disorganized life. No. They are so willing to make sure that, wait, let me organize my life well. Now, I'll take you back to the Garden of Eden. How did Adam arrange his life before he got married? The Bible says he first got a job. Onishe tonshe. Every sister that is here, understand, do not marry a jobless man. If you marry a jobless man, you will lose value. Because a woman is like, I'm sorry to use this word, but I want to use it to illustrate. It's like property. Not a property. Just like, not property. Now, why do I say just like? The more you invest on property, 
the more beautiful it looks. Hello? The more you invest on property, the more costly it is. Hello? That's why you see that at times some people are building. They will build, they will say, okay, let's put parapets on this structure. After putting parapets, they will go around, let's look at, let's go to the window. Let's put, a, what do you call this, artwork. Now, they are doing it to enhance the value of the property. You yourself know that the more blessed, the blessed, or can I put it this way, the, the blessing of the man ref, should reflect on his wife. Hello? Now, that's why, I see, no matter how valuable you are, if you marry a man who is here to organize his own life and he brings you into his life, you begin to lose value because he will not be able to maintain you. And women need maintenance. They are not like men. A man can wear one boxer for one year and nothing will happen. He won't have infection. I'm telling you, he won't have infection. He may wear it three days and wash it the fourth day and decide not to wear it the fourth day. And wear it the fifth day. He may even wash it and even wear it while it is cold. Kilo <laughs> But if a woman continues to wear an underwear for some time, you will notice it. She will, she will catch infection. That's why they need to be changing on their underwear the way they are created. A woman needs maintenance. Who is a father? A father is a man who organizes his life. Now, don't forget, we are talking about number two. Two is vision. He's so vision driven. And under that vision driven, you know, that purpose driven life is 2A. Because of his vision, he does not just want to bring a woman into the state of an unorganized life. I'm still talking to you, the youths here. You want to become the kind of father that they're going to praise? You want to become the kind of father that will leave an inheritance behind for children's children? What should you do? Organize your life before you bring a woman in. Because marriage is not cheap to maintain. Marriage is expensive. If a man does not use cream, Abby, my, my wife, does not use powder. If a man does not even comb his hair, like I didn't comb my own now, nobody, nothing will happen. A man may be taking his bait today. He may use a, 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 a clean to wash his, to, to, to bait. Tomorrow, if he sees soap, he's baiting. Nothing will happen, but a woman cannot try it. A woman will tell you this powder does not go with my skin. It was when I got married, I noticed that there's one, the cup, no, color one, color two, color three, color... I didn't know all those things before. I didn't know all those things. I have no business with those things. But when I got married, and started having children that are also females. Now, I now discover that women are very expensive to maintain. That's why, please, young man, listening to me, the process of becoming a father should start with vision. You should have a dream. What kind of a man do you want to become? And I've shown you a vision in Proverbs 13, 20. You must become the kind of man that at your old age, when you are, it is time for you to go, there will be something to write about in your will. Thank you, sir. He caught it. And you, bro, he didn't say amen to that. I was listening to Pastor Matthew Ashimolo about a month or two ago. And it was, it was a, an interview. And somebody asked him a question. You know what he said? Is that to the glory of God? I just want to let you know that I'm fulfilling scriptures right now. That I'm blessed with three children, two biological, one extra. Now, he said, my children, I had to ask them, now that I'm 70, what do you want? Where do you want to live? One said, I want to stay in England. I gave him a house in England. I bought it, gave the documents to him. Another one said, I want to live in Lagos. He said, I bought a, a house for him in Banana Estate. Gave him documents. Your own settlement. I now brought their grandchildren and told them, from now on, their children, that's my own grandchildren, I now, he said, from now on, your school fees should not be on your daddy. I will be paying the school fee, tuition of your children. Tell me, how will poverty not end in that generation? But if you don't live a vision-driven life, oh, the vision, you now see that those children will be struggling to rise. That's why you see that poverty doesn't end. 
Poverty now becomes a prayer point. Poverty is supposed to have ended from our fathers. You know one of the reasons why the gospel is not strong in Africa? is because what we preach mostly is the gospel of meeting need. Gospel of help meeting. If I don't do prayer meeting of work back here, work back here, you won't see crowd. So we are supposed to have left that realm. We also have been teaching on the image of Christ. Preparing the people for, are you getting what I'm saying? But poverty has not ended. The reason is because the fathers lived their life without focus. Somebody will just wake up and tell the boy, Tom Modimati, to loco, loco, praise on Modimati, Lunier, Yahweh, da. Are you going to listen to that? Are you going to listen to that? Are you going to And the next thing, praise on the Lord, Tom Modimati, loco, loco, you now begin to look around, look around. Ah, it will loco, me, wow, it will loco. Marriage is the next thing. <laughs> so under it they will, be, they will be willing they will be so willing to organize their lives before they bring a woman and a child into it they have a program they are following do you have a program? what makes fathers fathers? they have programs now it's because we have program hear me go study biology they will tell you once, one semen, that's, I don't want to use uh, the uh, layman's language, spermatozoa is what they call it. It that comes out of a man, the eggs is over one million. So which means that every time a man meets a woman and releases, he has the potential to, to have one million children. But when the woman's egg receives, it rejects some. It is the man that now has vision that will say, come. Yes, I have the potential every time I meet my wife to have one million children. But if I have one million children, will you ever be well with me? <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? It is vision, driven life, that makes you a father. That no, 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 I can't go more than two. Let me not go more than three. Oh. Let me not follow the scripture that says, MRBC, MRSC. No, no. B, on that B of it, B of it. They deliberately space and decide the number of children they want. Want to bear. They deliberately space on that. We are still on that 2B. We have seen 2A. What is 2A? They organize their life before they bring the woman in. We are looking at what makes you a father. They deliberately space and decide the number of children they want to bear because of their vision to raise them properly. It is their vision to raise children properly that determines the number of children they want. It's not just that, let's just be giving, but they have a vision. And you yourself know. Now, I took time, I was just studying, you know? I was just studying most of these great people. You see them either one or two children, one or two children, great men. Men that are rated riches on the earth. One or two children. One will have one daughter, some, one daughter, some two sons. Why? They have somebody will say, but they have the potentials to deliver more. But it is a vision-driven life that makes a father a father. So what's B again? They deliberately space their uh, and delib uh, sorry, space and decide the number of children they want. Now show me that Proverbs 19, verse 14. They want to bear because of their vision to raise them properly. They want to raise them properly. Brother Kafo, you are welcome online, but I want you to be here. Pastor El, uh, Aso Elvis, that's my friend, he's in Port Harcourt. God bless you, sir. Now look at Proverbs 19, 14. Proverbs 19, 14. Houses and riches are what? The inheritance of fathers. So who should give the children houses and riches? Answer me now. God. Ah, sorry, fathers. It's not something you should be doing in prayer meeting. Uh, this is scriptures. Who should give houses and riches? God, uh, fathers. Why am I saying God? Fathers. He said, look at the one that God can give. He said, and a prudent wife is from the Lord. 
That one your father cannot give you. He said, but houses and riches. That's why, those of you watching me here, before you begin to blame your fathers, begin to ask yourself, am I not gradually walking into the same mistake? So, this vision-driven life is what makes these fathers to say, okay, you know what? You know what? We are not going to have the number of children that I have inside of me, inside of my loins. I'm going to have two. I'm going to have three. I'm going to have six. Now, you know what we're going to do? We are not just going to be releasing anytime we, are, we have this sexual urge into ourselves. Let me not just release into you. Taye is just one year, six months. If I release into you, I get pregnant again. It's not God's fault. It's a vision-driven life. I'm rushing because of time. See, see under it. Their vision is what propels their heart to use the rod of discipline when they see that their children are gradually drifting out of their established paths. I come again. Their vision is what propels their heart to use the rod of discipline, when they see that their children are gradually drifting out of their established path. Hear me. It is because of the vision that fathers have that makes them to use what we call pankere in Nigeria. That are kilon shomoy, kilon shomoy, kilon shomoy, because at times our children, my wife, we, we discuss, they don't understand why we are hard on them. They don't understand that the reason is because of the vision we have. I always tell my daughters, I don't want a daughter that will leave my house to marry and be returned back to my house later in life. I don't want such. So I told them, we started a new training yesterday that from now on, you'll be doing this, you'll be doing this, you'll be doing this, and if you like, cry blood, you will do it. What am I saying? Vision. It's what makes fathers father. A, 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 a visionless biological father is not a father. A visionless biological father is not even available to discipline his child. He does not know where his child is part time. I told you last week Sunday. When prophet Samuel came to Jesse's house, all his sons gathered. God didn't choose any of them. They asked Jesse, is this all yours? Are these all your sons? He said there is one. He is right now with the sheep at the wilderness. He knew what Joseph, uh, uh, sorry, uh, 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 David was at that time. Now, someone else has sent somebody to bring him. They sent somebody, they met David where his father said he will be. An absentee father is not a father. A father that is not there to know the children, to know the character of the children is not a father. You don't even know your children's path. You have not been to your children's school. You don't know how they perform. You don't know whether they get to school. You don't know your children's teacher. You are not a father. Look at that word of Jesse. No wonder David was ready to take care of his father at his, at his, when God blessed him. He was ready. He said, you will meet my son. He is at so and so place right now. So it is this vision that makes them to apply, apply the rod of discipline. It is that vision that will make them to say, no, my son, you don't need a phone now. You don't need a phone now. My son, now go to bed now. now do you know that it was this vision that made me set up a law? Thank God for my wife. We set up that law many years ago in our house. We don't watch TV except on Friday evening, Saturday morning, till Sunday evening. Now, by Sunday evening, they all know, they know they turn off the for, uh, uh, TV. Autumn, the Friday night. There is nothing that can, and for me to make it work, I myself, Christian, are you here? I have to discipline myself not to watch TV. So, it was like that for many years in my house. I told you, I told them in the first service. We had to set tests for uh, uh, my, my first child. You are going to be 16. My wife told her. They told me later. I promised her she was going to celebrate her 16th year birthday if she passed Neko and Jam. And she was in SS2. So we took the exam for her. 
I was surprised. My daughter will stand up in the middle of the night. Ah, she will pray, 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 pray. After she pray, she will read, read because I've taught them. When it is time to read, read as if you don't have God. When it is time to pray, pray as if you have not read. I learned that from Dickness Kike Lomo Adidayo. Now Kike Lomo Jaisemi. Because some of you, you go into exam hall and you are praying. You didn't read. Eh, mimi mo, bewa, 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 kuni be un kan kan wa. Kawe. So, any lad will be reading. Anwe a shemi, but she wanted to win the prize. Birthday celebration at 16. So, from SS2, she did the exam. She made a jam. She scored 232. Made a neck of papers. And my wife prom- told me her promise. I said, no problem. We'll pursue it. Let her get to admission. Let her go to school. She's in school. Then we told the second one, at the age 12, if you pass your neko, we'll try neko for you from SS1. Age 12, she's, she made a neko SS1. I said, keep it. I set out for YK SS2. She's writing YK now. She says, SS2. You have made your neko. Don't relax. Make your YK. Once you make your YK, I told her, the reason is because in case you travel to study, they said they don't recognize Neko abroad. So have your work. Even the one that is in university that did Neko, she's writing work now. She's in 100, writing 100 level exam at the same time and writing work. She said, Daddy, why do I need to go back and write work? I said, well, I have a vision that your second degree will be abroad. It is vision driven life that makes us use rod. And I said, I'm not going to beat my child, I won't beat my daughter. If your father didn't beat you, you will spoil. Because of those abroad. What we call beating here is scolding abroad. Hmm? Where are we now? Okay, let's go to point number three. We are through with two. What makes, what's the question we are answering? What does it take to become a father? Number three, the sacrifice, listen to this, of laying aside your personal need in order to meet the need of the family. The sacrifice of laying aside your personal need in order to meet the need of the family looking up to you. What makes you a father? The sacrifice of laying aside your personal need in order to meet the need of the family looking up to you. This is what makes you a father. I wrote down here. Precious, take note of this quote. You cannot be a, sorry, you cannot be selfish and become a father at the same time. Meditate over it. You cannot be selfish and become a father at the same time. Oh, Lelaun, who de Jebaba, who possible? To Balaun, Oba Bimo, to Po, O Kinshi Baba. Do you know why? A father is sacrificial in nature. So you can't be selfish eh, and become a father at the same time. Now I'll put this one under A, B, C, and D so that you can understand A, B, C. So that you can understand the sacrifice of laying down your personal needs. A. This is why he picks up jobs. So that he will have the needed finance to meet up with the bills at home. That's why the man is working under, under three, three A now. This is why he picks up jobs so that he will have the needed finance to meet up with the bills at home. He doesn't want to disappoint his family. That's why he's working. I know of fathers in the school that I, I am a proprietor uh, that pays school fee during holiday, they will have come. This holiday will tell me, sir, they have cleared school fees of next time, of the coming time. You know what I used to call this one? I, said, I, want, I want Baba no. And there are some, they'll be saying, ah, when you send them a uh, no, note during mid term break, school fees drive begins on Monday. Ah, Real fathers. The, listen, the, the sacrificial attitude is what prompts them to work. Ah, 
Will they send my daughter, my son out of school? God forbid. Uh -uh. Will I get home and I will say there is no food? God forbid. My, my wife's mom of blessed memory, she always say that one thing she would tell others, one thing about Pastor Folabi is that, see, in his house, your three square meals will complete. It must be complete. That's why I'm a father. You work. Fathers work. They work here to make sure that bills are paid. How will you stand to be watching your children? They leave, will come from court and they'll be saying, we have received judgment to eject you from the house. What will you tell your children? Say, God forbid. They are sacrificial. Fathers are sacrificial. I come again. Fathers are sacrificial in nature. I told, you in the first, I told them in the first service, I just gave a, a, a brief uh, a hint. That you see, if you see sacrificial fathers, they don't go to the market to buy clothes by themselves. They don't go to buy shoes. They don't go to buy jewelry. They don't go, you'll be, you'll be surprised. How did they get what to wear? Out of compassion, their wives go to the market. The, ah, ah, my try. My try. Out of compassion, you see that their wives will bring clothes to them at home. Daddy, uh, uh, I need his trousers, I need his shirt. Because they see that their husbands are sacrificial. That's, those are fathers. It is not your manhood that makes you a father. So we have seen the A. They pick up jobs so that they can meet up with the bills. They want to meet up with the bills. B. That's why he creates time to intercede for his family even when they are still busy sleeping. How do you know, fathers? On that B, uh, 3B, they, they, they create time to intercede. You'll be praying for their children. I used to walk to my children's room. They don't know. I will lay hand on them one after the other. Father, I pray for Eniola. In the name of Jesus. I pray for Eniola. In the name I pray for Oriola. In the name of Jesus. Then at times I will not go to my wife. But she, she used to wake. Once I touch her head, she will stand up. I know she trusts me. Because if I'm fake, she will come away from me. She will. <laughs> you know, there are some of you men. If you lay your hand on your wife from this night, she won't sleep again. <laughs> She'll be walking around. <laughs> But real fathers are sacrificial. They move around. Ah, they, can, they are the ones that go around and see, feel the temperature. They will off the fan. Can I go on? See, see, he sacrifices even his personal need for clothes and material things to make sure his family become great. That's a father. You will notice that they, yes, they sacrifice. I come again, they sacrifice. He sacrifices even his personal need for, clo for clothes and material things. He wants to sacrifice. Even the money he should use to buy cloth for himself. The father will, you know, Before my wife started to understand me, but thank God she has understood me now. I used to tell her, if you see money with me, don't think that every money with a father, a real father has budget. Ah, when I was paying for my children's exams, it was not easy for me. All my savings. Pay for this one, pay for that one. Pay for this school fee. Pay for you know all my savings. It was not easy. But it would be a shame that they say, "Where, where are your children? You cannot present them," and you say, "You are a father." One of us was sharing with me. He said, "Doctor Nature was preaching online." He said, "See, if you take this church from me, it does not matter to me." He said, "I have invested so much in my children." They are well positioned all over the world. They can take care of me till I die. What are you doing with your own children? 
When my daughter gained the admission, they had to send me out of the admission office because I went there to see them. And hey, what are the things you need? They now ask me, who gained the admission, sir? <laughs> Is it you? I said, no, my let her come and sit down. And that was when it was done on me that she's no longer in secondary school. What do tell the admission office? Oh yeah, uh, what do you want us to feel? Some fathers don't care. You know what we are securing? We are securing the, our future. I went to uh, Fresh FM last week to do a program with uh, uh, only was true, brother Biodun. Before I got there, a 95-year-old man was there. So they were interviewing him. I was to be next. The son now followed him. Listen. The son now said, I think Mr. Agbenga was with me. Pro Precious was with me. He lied. Sorry, my hand. That in those days, that this my father used to slap me. Slap me. But now I'm the one telling him where to go. When the Baba wants to talk, that duty to 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 Baba, ma mu bo ni o de ji. Igbo Bible lo ka lojo aro. O wa fe fi gbo igbo pari e. The boy now says, "Na yi gan ma for me ma for she be mi mu inkirisi." Baba e sha e e e e e ma e ma e ma dalo. I was looking at him 95. I was thinking of my own old age. When he finished, I knelt down. I didn't care that I was a pastor. I came for a program. I got 2,000 in my pocket and I put it in his hands. When he was when he had, pastor, I want to watch the program. I want to know, pastor, oh, Baba, I should have a phone. I do have a phone. I do have a I want to see if I do have a phone. I want to see if I do have over 45 years ago. One by I by town that corner to Basu and when we know my dear, when it's so lati I go mefa, titi di ago mefa jokeji, and one man she showed every day. Tam on my shiny lecon tea, and one day my go on shit like chat chat, and she so I won't make experience. Wow, quickly, we don't have all the time. Now look at this one too. D, under D. The sacrifice of planning the next state of action. The next state is, this is responsibility of fathers. He's thinking. Next state of action. If my family member said, Pastor, please, let your children come and study in Canada. We are now in Canada. Let them, I told her, I said, please, don't worry. Let them finish their first degree. I don't want to raise children because people, some of you don't understand that most of these countries, if you go there, you can't go to church again. Now, if at your own level of growth, you don't go to church, it's still okay. But if you are not rooted and you go to such countries, you will doubt God. Canada is a snow country, a country where it's cold. Most times they work from home. You might wake up tomorrow in the morning and for the next one week you can't go to work. They, understand. they will pay you. It's the father that sits down to, to plan. The children are happy when they hard. Canada. I listened to Reverend Tony Bakari. You know what he said? He said, he agreed, I agreed with my children. No matter what you study abroad, let's sign a deal before you start traveling. Whatever you want to become, 
they come in and come back to stay in Nigeria. The father sits down. Even it was difficult to make plans. It's not packing on your family. Let's go, my wife and my children. Oh, yeah, let's relocate to London. If that's not the issue. Think of the next five years. The next ten years. The next twenty years. Have you found a job? I shall take a long struggle long. I'm a make it. I'm a tapa mafi fabo. Fun be three three hours every day. I I roll. Somebody approached one of our church members. Send us one of your children. He has just two. Send your your child. That one should be about four, four, five, or six years. Send him to me in London. Let me raise him for you. He was happy at first. His wife was happy, but when he asked me, I said, see. Let him go a five-year-old child to go and stay in London. Raised by somebody else. If in the next 20 years, what would that child think? Yes, the child may have opportunity, but what place will he place you as the father in his own heart? Oh, is it because you are so poor that you don't love me? Some of you don't know that so most of these things. Was it not last week Sunday we finished preaching on fathers? One of our, our children came to see me. He said, sir, please pray for me. I hate my father with passion. He irritates me. His presence disgusts me. But the message you have preached today, honor your father and mother that your days may be long. I want to live long. Sir, please pray for me so I can love my father. So I had to start counseling him. After counseling, I now prayed for him. Forgive him. And what led that hatred more? He said, I, I had opportunity. My dad had two children. One from another woman and me. He now said he prefers to pay for the exam of that one and left me. We have to be careful. He would have lost that child if not that he was in church on Sunday to hear the message. So fathers sacrifice time to plan. Ah. Let's go to number four. We don't have all the time. Number four. What makes you a father? The maturity on how to manage your emotion and still love your wife and children. Even when <laughs> your children show more affection to their mom. It's one of the things that makes you a father. The maturity on how to manage your emotion and still love your children. Even when your children show more affection to their mom. That's why every child that is here, do you know how, how much you make your fathers jealous? Now, for instance, you give back to children, you send for your mom. If you are in Canada, in London, your mom will leave daddy behind. Now, you just put yourself in the shoe of daddy. Maybe he's going for, you are going for, your, the wife is going for three months. Thank God, in the family where I am raised, our spiritual lineage, my wife know, at Ijoso, we don't go for Mubo. Any child that delivers will come. That's our agreement. That's what my mother and the Lord. So I'm waiting. The son I've married now. What, that's what they have taught us. So I'm watching. If she, she practices, what she do, we do is what we determine what I will do. So I'm watching. I saw the way they, they did the wedding of their son. That's how we do the wedding of my children. They are the ones I'm following. So I'm now waiting. When the wife of the son deliver now, I will see how they will do the Omugo. Uh -huh. If mommy pack her things and go, then my wife will pack her things and go. In our own time. So, I, there must be a pattern. Now, but let me leave that one. That's not where I'm going. I want you children to understand what daddy's face. My, my, one of my senior reverend I know, he said, three of my children deliver almost the same time. 
My wife has been gone, pastor, for one year, five months now. That reverend now says, sir, now I know the reason why people marry two wives. <laughs> yes, sir. The wife does not love him. That's it. That's the truth. Is the truth. Go and watch that Monzion film. What's the title of that film? Very beautiful film. What's that Monzion film? That film blessed his aunt's mother, mother-in-law also. He said, why will I have to leave my husband? These are the things fathers are going through. That's why. Celebrate them today. At times you come home, daddy is happy that you are home, but you are inside the room with mommy. <laughs> you think daddy is not feeling the pain? He's feeling it. But what makes him a father is the ability to manage his emotion. Are you learning? <laughs> hey. We don't have all the time. Ah, Holy Spirit. Why is it that there are several wrong fathers today? I'll quickly give three answers because of time. Why is it that there are several wrong fathers today? One, so many young men were wrongly raised. So many young men were wrongly raised. Some were over pampered. While some were neglected. So, three categories of wrong fathers. I want to were wrongly raised. I want to were over pampered. And I want to neglect. Now, I purposely brought this answer, hear me, to talk to parents. Please, please. If you are raising a boy child, I want you to always remember that you are raising somebody's husband and you are raising somebody's father. I come again. If you are raising a male child, ma wo pe boya okun ni kan pere lo mo okun ni to ni. Ah o be ni meta okun ni kan. Don't do that. Always think, if you are raising a girl child, you are raising somebody's wife. I always tell my children, if you don't know how to cook, you have a problem. So I have, follow your mommy to the kitchen. They don't like it, but you have to enforce them. If you are raising a male child too, let them begin to understand responsibility from the early stage. Put things in their care and let them give account. Don't spoil those children. Don't do everything for them. Especially, I'm, I'm focusing on the male child now. You know, there are some parents like that. You always fight. Eh, my child. Eh, don't do that to a male child. Don't responsible. That my mom of blessed memory. I dare not cry to the house. She will beat she will tell you, they beat you, and you are crying. Is it that you are just going on your own and they beat you? It's not possible that you are going on your own and they beat you. You must have done something. She divide work for us from early stage. The one that will be washing plates, the one that will be washing cloth, the one that will be mopping the floor. Teach them responsibility. And see, you know what they talk, why I talk about the neglected ones? You notice some natures in your child and you close your eyes. It will tell in the future. I used to tell one of my children, you are too aggressive. That this aggressive nature, I don't like it. And the mother will not even keep quiet. I don't like this nature. You are too aggressive. We always tell another one, you don't like challenges. When you see challenge, you want to do like snail. You withdraw. You have to face reality. Don't neglect them. Don't leave them to themselves. I was telling my younger daughter, anytime if Oriola should hit you, beat him seriously. So he, she punched her, her and 
and your laugh, oh, he was coming. When you laugh, I say, punch your back, punch him. Push your punch, and it's plenty. Of. I didn't say you should hit him that hard. But you two, next time, you don't beat a girl. I started from now. Don't neglect children. Children left alone to themselves, Bible says, will destroy themselves. Now, I didn't talk about over pampered. Don't, don't pamper children. They, they, those children you are looking at, they know what is right. Oh. But if you pamper them because you want to, maybe, especially those of you that have only one girl, only one boy, my son, my daughter. If you pamper them and they get spoiled, in the future they are coming back home. And that will be a pain in the heart of the prayer. I want to finish this. Two. Now what's the question again? Why is it that there are several wrong fathers? Number two. So many young men have not yielded their hearts to sound biblical doctrines. They still believe in several wrong traditions. Is that issue not here? So many young men have not yielded their hearts. Please don't forget all the men. I want to see you after the service. So wait. There's one something I want to show you. So many young men have not yielded their hearts to sound biblical doctrine. Some people, no matter what you preach, they, don't, they won't agree. They still believe in wrong culture. And it affects them. They still believe in wrong culture. Do you know that there are some people that still believe that you don't train a, you don't train a gay girl child? You say, no, you don't send female children to school. They will go to their husband's house. Can I tell you the truth? It is female children that takes care of their parents more than male children. It's the truth. A man, eh, is a creature of sight. If he finds new love, Eh? He forgets the old one. That's how God created man. They, they see beautiful things and love it. You know, the mother is no longer beautiful. So once he finds a gay girl, ah, I love this girl. This girl is beautiful. He can be spending his salary and be telling mommy, mommy, we are struggling in Lagos. But female children, with, eh, my mommy, my daddy. You know, they are the ones that are loved. Men give them. You are the one that love, that give. Please, see. The moment you are born again, you know what? Open your heart and let the scriptures mold your heart. Lastly, under it, why is it that there are several wrong fathers? Some just don't want to follow the principles of fatherhood. They feel it is just too hard for them to meet up. Some don't want to follow it. You hear men are saying, people that are saying, oh, I cannot kill myself over any child. I cannot kill myself. Ah, no, 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 no. No, I have to enjoy my life. They don't want to change. For me to raise children, I have to deprive myself. Of, he's a father too. He has about two children in our institution, Abby. You have to deprive yourself a lot of things, but some don't want to. Wrong mindset, and they don't want to change. Quickly, another question here. Are there benefits that fathers enjoy when they carry out their responsibility effectively? Are there benefits? The answer is yes. And there are two. One, there's inner satisfaction that you have raised your children well and that none of them will have problem in the future. There's this inner satisfaction. If for combat le manwa, Mama wants him to raise. Me, no problem. Lord, you That's the first benefit. 
If you don't raise them well, you'll be afraid. If they say, ah, police have arrested some guys, you'll be afraid. If they say, ah, ah, it's like the she and her husband have misunderstanding, you'll be afraid. But you know when you raise children and you raise them well, you have this inner peace. The proprietress of my daughter's school sent a message to us. I read the message. What did I say? I said, this is my daughter. This woman, I've seen her. The summary, this is my daughter. I didn't argue. So, inner peace is the first thing. Because some parents are afraid. Always afraid. Ah, omotunlo ya padawa. You want to buy that child without him now? Why are you so cool? Because you shop with him. Why are you like that? Then she don't know where he don't lay. So by my video, I'm asking him to cheat. I'm making that giddy bull be funny, bro. But when you buy that child, giddy, come on, come see me. I'm going to give you a pad. Two. God will be proud of you. And when God is proud of you, all things will work for you. We find that in Genesis chapter 18, 17 to 19. God said concerning Abraham, I know he will command his children. So can you now see that fatherhood is not easy? So easy. So easy. Edwin Shanua on Baba no. Please celebrate. I want you to, from your heart, appreciate fathers. It's a big work. Even if that person is not responsible for the sake of Bible promise, respect him. You know one of the things why you should respect fathers? A man may sleep beside his wife in the night, saying to her, as we are going to bed now, and in the morning, they wake up, the wife will put a bill of like... 5,000 front. The man will now be asking, she must she shall do a line. She bad your loss, Lalia, not to move, but she money to the table. A pastor visited me yesterday, we we're just talking. He said, Papa, Pastor, he's one of my spiritual uh, people that look, at, look up to me as mentor. He said, Sir, I had to go out, sell my phone, and brought money for my family to feed. He said, When I came back, Put money down for my wife to buy things. She asked me, Dear, where did you get money from? He said, Eat first. These are fathers. Stand up and begin to thank God for fathers. Be on your feet and begin to thank God for your father. You see that we are looking for a song to sing for them. We didn't see. <laughs> what did he do? Eh, come on me, oh, what will I do? Come on, that's what I'm saying. I'm going to go to my Anybody could nearly bear. I took a quick leap. It's not easy to be a father. Women, do you understand now? It's not easy to be a father. It's not easy to be. That's why I say every wife here, hmm, celebrate your husband. Ma? I didn't hear you. Eh, call him, make a call. Celebrate him. Appreciate him. 
thank God for his life. It's not easy to be a father. If you look at the, 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 the providing aspect. I was telling my wife four days ago, I wanted to go and help the gen. Because we, you know, the, like, you can't trust Nigerian lights now. So we normally off we, the gen every 11 p.m. Because of our community. So as I got out of the house, I just saw full moon. I remember Dracula. All these movies that we used to watch. Those Vampire. But will I be in the house and tell my wife to go off the gen? Or tell the children, go off the gen? Fathers. That's where I used to put cutlass. Mula dambe, be. Like my generator, me now. Who told me? Timbati fell up, but generator, Mati far die. Anything. She, you were very speaking tongues. It did to live a face here. You know, that's why I was telling her that what is happening in the north, don't allow it to happen here. Look at what happened at Owo. The fear of death is what caused death. Somebody enter, you know that it's sure somebody will die. All of you are now running to the altar. In your mental load of your pain. Let's all, all conclude. If somebody will die, it's sure. Let's stop this thing. The scarcity of men is what is happening now. Everybody wants, ah, me of a cool, me of a cool. And those people have studied them, they know that it is the altar they will run to. They put a bomb there. If Boko Haram, we are not praying the entire your stage, protect yourself, protect your family. My cutlass, I have where I used to put it. My father's sword, military sword, I have where I put it. One day I was patrolling, and when my, my, my guard was not around, I took the sword. I held it. I was going around the compound. Somebody saw me. Pastor, when it's, how are you? God bless you. He done not Larry, you Larry. Will you celebrate your fathers? Yes. Celebrate them. Hmm? There are so many battles you will have been fighting, if not for fathers. And like I told you last week, those of you, my father and my mother separated. Yes. Your mother and your father separated. Don't, don't come in between. Don't listen to anybody's version. What scatter them, two of them understand, but love them equally. Father, we thank you. Let's begin to thank the Lord again for tonight, this morning. I mean, this afternoon, let's thank the Lord. I give you all the praise, Lord. I give you all the worship. I lift your name on high. I appreciate you for who you are. Thank you for this that you have done. Thank you for the word that we have had. Father, we take...